Holly, you there? I'm here. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Good morning. So as we sit here, well, it's Friday morning for you there. We're ta- we were talking while the song was playing, and it it's only an, an an hour difference there from where she is, and she's in well, Waco, right? Yep. So Waco, Texas. Um, my co-host is not here yet, so it's just me and you right now. But um, I was been following your Twitter and uh, looking at all your stuff that you put on and your website. I got nervous a little bit last night. I looked at the website, and it was gone for a little bit. Yeah, um, I'm actually putting it under construction right now because of the new album. So oh. we're uh, we're making a lot of changes. <laughs> well, that's good. I, I got a little nervous. I was like. Oh, my roommate goes. Oh, let me see the girl you're interviewing tomorrow. And I go, okay. I pull up, put you on your uh, email, like the IP address, and it's like under construction. And I was like, I promise, I'm doing an interview. Like, don't think I'm just scamming you. He's like, you better be. I'm gonna listen during class. I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, shout out to that guy. <laughs> exactly. So, obviously, um, our listeners don't know, but I did a little research, and uh, you graduated from Baylor, right? I did back in May. Back in May, wow! So it's not that long ago that you graduated. No, I'm not too old. <laughs> <laughs> so graduated in May. I'm only a sophomore, so I still got a couple more years to go. But um, what did you study there? Well, I had a degree in communications. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Did you live on campus or off campus? I lived on campus all four years in a dorm, actually. All right. So you you know how the dorm life is being buddy buddy with hopefully your best friend some nights you yeah. hate him some nights you love him yeah actually the the first year i was on campus i had two roommates and then the, the second year i moved to a different dorm with another friend of mine and we stayed together the rest of our four years um so it was, she turned into my best friend and it was actually really cool her well, name's logan so well, that's really cool shout out to logan for being a true friend you know <laughs> <laughs> dealing with everything so how did she a little. I'm going to stray off topic here a little bit, but how did she deal with the fact? Did you go to the Voice during college, or was it like before college? It was during. Yep. <clears throat> so she stayed with you throughout the whole thing. She did, That's and a- she was such a trooper. Like she spent so many nights. Like, uh, you know, I was I was on the show and everything, and I was in California, and you know, we would Skype every now and then, but um, a lot of times, you know, I was doing things and it was a time difference so um when she was in class you know i wasn't busy and then when i was busy she was free and so we didn't get to talk some days you know and it was kind of weird because we had we had been roommates so it uh but she was right there the whole time supporting me and rooting me on and uh she that's why she's you know my best friend because she supported me when a lot of people you know might not have so (laughs) exactly well that's very sweet um from you in was it Logan again? No. What was your yeah, roommate's name? Again? Logan. That's my best friend. Yeah. All right. Did you guys have probably your favorite memory throughout college that you and her or you and a couple of your friends did? Like, what's your favorite college memory? Uh, well, um, dang, that's hard. <laughs> it's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> Baylor is uh, Baylor's an amazing school, and so it's really hard to choose. Um, I would probably have to say um, the the season after I came back from The Voice. Um, I went to The Voice in, like, the spring semester. So the next fall semester, I came back to school as a student, and um, uh, I was a member of the band before I left, and I wasn't a member at this time, but they asked me to do a special show with the band during halftime at one of the oh, football games. And um, so they they did a show based off the songs that I did on The Voice. Huh. And they got, they got me in the middle of the field on a big stage and made a big halftime show, actually. Um, so I got to sing on the field uh, with the, the whole 300-member Golden Wave band <laughs> behind <laughs> me. It was really, really cool. That's just, that sounds really cool. Um, that's awesome. I can't really. I'm kind of starstruck here. Well, you got to think about it. You graduated, and then you're like, "I'm famous." Well, I was on The Voice, and for all my listeners out there, Holly finished. I think it was sixth out of forty thousand. Yep. I think that season. Uh-huh. So 
to have her on our show. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, guys, you are listening to WSIN 1590 AM. This is Country Fried. I am Tyler Ferrara. This is Miss Holly Tucker. She is, lis- uh, she is interviewing with us all the way from Waco, Texas. So all the way up north here we are. And she's coming all the way from the south. Going to go into a little bit of country music here. Um, Holly, if you had a choice to pick any singer or any country band singer, performer, dead or alive, who would you pick to go on tour with? Uh, um, that's a tough one. <laughs> you made that a really hard question. It's, it is so <laughs> ma- there's so many people. I understand. I, I, I made this question and I look at my co-host and she's like, you really going to ask her this question? I go, yeah, I want to know because there's so many out there. But because I know from doing research that you you perf- that year that you were on The Voice, you were with the Swan Brothers mm-hmm. and, and Danielle Bradbury, right? Yeah. And then you're also was coached by Mr. Blake Shelton. Uh-huh. So to have those three in my eyes, because I like the new upcoming country stars. Don't get me wrong. I do like my Luke Bryan and Kenny Chesney and all that, but I like the more up and coming generation. And that's what I try to do with my show here. But I was looking, I was looking at it and I could see you performing or going on tour with like, a, um, with a Thomas Rhett or, um, Hmm. I I I was listening to your music and his music, and I could see you guys going on tour very well together. Yeah, well, I'll tell you one that I would love to go on tour with, and that's Mr. Chris Young. Oh, um, okay. And no, that is not only because I have a major crush on him, <laughs> um, but it's also because he's a fantastic vocalist, oh, and yeah. uh, I'm one of those people that just really appreciates like the actual voice, like that's an instrument to me, and. Um, so that's why all this new stuff, like the, the auto tune crap just really bothers me. Yeah. Um, and everybody uses it, but when you go see Chris Young live, he's just as good live as he is, you know, in the studio. And that's just really hard to find. Oh yeah, so, it really is. And, and he also puts on a really great entertaining show. So I think it could be a good match. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to tweet at Chris Young together and be like, you got to get Holly Tucker on tour with you or get her to go to a couple shows with you. I went I to mean, see. I'd be off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would, I would definitely try to fly down, you know, get, get a show with you and Chris Young. That'd be awesome. <laughs> um, I saw who I think is a great performer, country performer. I saw for the first time and I was really happy. Um, Darius Rucker. Yeah. Darius Rucker is an outstanding performer. And a country singer, and he he even brought back some of his Hootie and the Blowfish. I don't know if you are familiar, yeah. but uh, great performer. I would love to go see him in concert again. He was absolutely amazing. Um, to get to a little bit of the voice, what was it like being coached by Blake Shelton? I mean, he is exactly who you see on screen as he is off screen. I mean, he's just a really genuine, funny, um, goofball of a guy. And, uh, I mean, he was a great coach too. He, um, he taught me a lot about the performing aspect of it and, um, getting out of my shell. Um, I was actually kind of guarded, um, when I went on the show, just cause I, I knew that shows like that, um, you're open to a lot of criticism and, yeah. uh, that's, it's something that I've never really dealt with that well, but the show helped me do that. And so now I, I'm I'm a lot more open and um and he, he kinda he gave me some pointers for that. So um if you ever get the chance to be around him, you'll know what I'm talking about. He's he's crazy. I love him to death. I hope so. one day I could be around him. That'd be awesome. Um As I said before, you were on the same season as the Swan Brothers and uh I hope they're saying I'm saying the name right. The Swan. You Bradbury are, yeah. And Danielle Bradbury. Do you keep in touch with them anymore, or is it just kind of like you guys know each other on a a friend basis? Actually, I talk to the Swan Brothers a lot. Um, I I texted them the other day actually because uh, they did a Facebook Live video and uh, they were they were playing one of their new songs off their album, 
And I commented in, and I was like, hey, boys, who wrote your song that you're playing? <laughs> and uh, they were answering some questions, and they were like, oh, hey, Holly Tucker, we love you and stuff. So, um, And they, they actually came and did a show here. I think it was in Dallas. And uh, I said, hey, guys, I'm going to come see you guys uh, perform at this place called Cowboys. Yep. And um, they were like, well, shoot, if you're going to be there anyway, why don't you just get up and sing a few with us? And so we did We did a few songs together, actually some that we did on The Voice, and uh, it was a really fun night. So all that to say, yeah, they're still really good friends of mine. Um, Daniela I haven't talked to actually since the show, but I've tweeted at her a couple of times, and uh, she's tweeted back. So right. um, we're, it, it was all kind of just a big family, and uh, especially on our season, since there was a lot of country artists, Yeah, um, that's that kind of formed a really good bond. Well, you guys must have went in there with... I wouldn't say high hopes, but great expectation because Cassidy Pope won the season before you guys, and she's kind of starting to become this big country female uh, singer. And so you guys are like, okay, cool. We had uh, Cassidy Pope win it last year. Let's get country music two years in a row. And so I think it was Danielle won first place, the Swan Brothers won second place, and then was it... um, I think it was Michelle Shamuel. Yep, and then it on and on. Unfortunately, you were. I watched the, see, the episode on uh, on a playback of you. And personally, I don't think you should have been kicked off that night. But oh, let, let's not get the judges you. started on that. But um, <laughs> a few more questions we're gonna ask you. These are more. I don't know where Randy is. She's probably sleeping right now. She told me last night. She goes, "You better get to sleep early. We got an early morning tomorrow." I go, "Oh, okay. Like no problem." And yeah, she's the one not here this morning. So, well, I hope she's okay. You never know what could happen. <laughs> exactly. Well, I hope she didn't like slip on ice on the way over here or something like that. She's probably just sleeping, knowing her. Are y'all having bad weather there? We had um, a lot of. It was very cold last weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like single digits here, and then it 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 kind of snowed, rained a little bit, kind of Monday into Tuesday night, mm-hmm. and then that. Wednesday, that Tuesday afternoon, it was like 53 degrees and all of it turned like to water and slop and everything. And then it froze over. So now there's like big chunks of ice everywhere. And it's just very weird weather here in Connecticut for this time of year. Yeah, that sounds joyful. (laughs) Exactly. Have you ever seen, well, you've probably seen snow, have you? I haven't seen like inches of snow, but... I was, uh, the last time I was in Nashville, like two weeks ago, um, it, it started snowing there and I got to see it falling and that was just so beautiful. I had never seen that before, but it was like being inside a snow globe. Yeah. It's, (laughs) it's pretty awesome. When, when, when we talk to people from like California and stuff like that, they're like, Oh, snow is amazing. And most of the people in Connecticut are like, I hate snow. Like I'm sick (laughs) of it. It's so funny. Yeah. Um, a couple silly questions before we let you go. Um, do you have any pre-concert rituals? Um, yeah. Um, I I will usually always pray yep. um, just because that really calms me down. And uh, I'll also breathe. <laughs> well, that helps. Um, the more oxygen to the brain, the, the calmer that I seem to be. So, um, and I, I do, I get nervous every time. It doesn't matter if I'm performing for three people or if I'm performing for 300,000 people. I mean, it's just like, it's, it's always nerve wracking for me. Um, and so I, I just have to do stuff to kind of calm me down. Um, which is why the breathing helps. And so that's kind of what I do. I breathe and pray. Well, that's good. Um, what holds the top spot on your bucket list? Like before, we don't want you to pass away, but before you pass away and move on, what is the number one thing you want to do? Mm. Well, mm. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, I have a lot of things. Um, I'm not just like a, a, a one dream type person. All right. So I don't really categorize them as important. All right. So um, give me a couple. As, as more important than the others. Um, so, but I, I do have a lot of places that I, I still want to see. Right. Um, 
And my top three places that I want to travel are uh, Spain, because I speak some Spanish. All right. And um, I want to go to Fiji, because it's really beautiful. And I want to go to Israel, because of my faith. All right, so, cool. Yeah. So that sounds really good. Um, I also want to go zip lining. I've never been zip lining. Zip, you've <laughs> never been? There's a couple places in Connecticut that does zip lining. I know that. For a fact, up up northern Connecticut near Massachusetts, um, what is one thing you cannot leave home without? My phone, definitely. Your phone? Uh, <laughs> I'm like glued to my phone, but uh, typically, if I'm if I'm going out somewhere, I have to have like my wallet at least because it has it also has my life in it. Yeah, in my phone. Um, as far well, I guess those are kind of ordinary things, huh? Yeah, um, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, oh, oh, okay, here's one. I have to have my chapstick because <laughs> your chapstick. Um, chapped lips bug the crap out of me. And so okay. if I'm without it for like three hours, they'll start getting really dry and that annoys the crap out of me. All right, just regular chapstick, like the chapstick brand? Or is it like a specific <laughs> one, the, like uh, Ego's, no, the egg no, one? It's a specific one. Chapstick actually dries your lips out. Like there's something in chapstick that makes you drier, so that you'll have to buy more. Oh, okay. Uh, but actually, this product that I use is from a company called Melaleuca, and it's amazing. All right. Um. Yeah. <laughs> On the East Coast, we have a company called Burt's Bees. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Yeah, yeah, we have that too. I've All never right. tried that one. Yeah, it's everyone on the East Coast. You either see them with Burt's Bees or. The egos like egg thing or the girls. Oh, use. yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Um, yeah. Well, thank you very much, Holly, for sitting down with us so early in the morning. Um, but I, I thank you for the good interview, and I hope you have a great day. Uh, is there any questions you want to ask us quick or? Um, well, I mean, you guys are like, y'all are starting off, right? Yeah, this is this is our first year. Uh, first our first year technically as a full some like full college year but this is our second semester so yeah this is gotcha and you guys are like is there is the station on campus yeah it, we have a big like student center you probably had one at Baylor where like yeah uh, yeah we do yeah so in our student center we have our clubs our gym a mini computer lab like a whole dining course and then a ballroom where like events are held and stuff like that. And we're on the, so we're on the second floor. Uh, it's called the Michael LaDante Student Center. Uh-huh. And our floor is where all the clubs are. So you could do um, intramurals, which does like floor hockey, uh, volleyball. It's like a sport that you could play that the club like uh, that the university like recommends you to play intramurals. I have a floor hockey team and a volleyball team that I'm with. So it keeps well, that's awesome. Yeah, we, we've got a lot of intramurals here, too. Um, and that's that's like a big thing for students. So yeah. that's really cool. I did a segment yesterday with one of the shows um, because I gave up my sports show just to do country music solely. And uh, have have you ever gone to see at Baylor a Quidditch match? <laughs> I've never gone to see one, but I know that it exists, and I think it's awesome. It is awesome. I did it yesterday as we uh, – I have a weird sport segment, so I've done huh. things like the cheese rolling in England, how the people race down the hill to grab the big block of cheese, and uh, <laughs> a whole bunch of other ones. And I saw it yesterday, and I was writing down, like, notable universities, and I saw Baylor, and I was like, well, Holly goes to Baylor. Let me ask her that question. But yeah. it, it's very interesting. If you have time today, look, go look at, like – how they play it, or look up last year's World Cup between actually two Texas teams. Uh, University of Texas had one, and then uh, Lone Star Quidditch Club, I think it was, out of Austin. Yeah. They're both out of Austin. And it's so weird to see like the game, like the it played because they have to run around with brooms in between their legs. It's just a, <laughs> a very, very odd sport. Yeah, I bet it's hilarious, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, the snitch, the guy's dressed all in yellow and has, like, the little sock tape to his back with, like, a tennis ball in it, and he has to run around the field and try not to get the snitch ripped off his back. Oh, it's so, it's so funny. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, But, yeah, no, um, we have a couple sports. Ours, 
ours is pretty much in the middle of the Adante Student Center. So if like you look from above, like from the clouds, and look straight down, we're literally in the middle of the whole thing. We have one studio that I'm in right now, and then two recording studios with an office and then like a big main lobby. Well, that's awesome. I wish you guys the best of luck with your station, okay. and I hope that things just take off, and you guys have a lot of really great artists come in there, and um, and you just get a big following, because that would, that would be really cool for you guys. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, hopefully, we can... I would love to get the Swan Brothers on, maybe with your little help from uh, a couple like tweets saying, oh, guys, you should do... But uh, I won't push my luck too far, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I can help. I can help. <laughs> but uh, we're definitely trying. We're looking at, I don't know if you ever heard this group. Well, I interviewed them. I emailed them the other day. It's called um, Barbed Wire Revive, Revolt or something like that. They're a, mm-hmm. a, a group out of Nashville. But we've had everyone, we've emailed so many people. Um, I emailed um, Winona. Um, Winona's new band is performing in New York. Yeah. And so she I asked her I was I had our music director email her like main guy because he gets in contact with us to hand out new albums. And I was like, if you could get Winona on this on the air, that'd be awesome. And he's like, she's in New York a couple days before your show. Why don't you just ask her to come in the studio? I go, if Eric, you could pull that off. I will love you forever. And he's like, he's like, I'll try. I'll try. So it's it's interesting. We've I hope to get bigger and bigger as we could go. So my goal is hopefully to get a person that a majority of people, I'd love to get like Luke Bryan or yeah. Jason Aldean. <laughs> That'd one be one. awesome. That'd be awesome. But my hopes and dreams are still out there. So we're going to start our way small. I'm not saying you're small, but um, but definitely ever, all listeners out there, uh Go listen to Holly's album, or she actually has a single still up right now. It's um, more than just a word. Yeah, and we're actually about to release another single here in the next few weeks, so nice. y'all be watching out for that. Uh, nice. So make sure you guys listen out for that. Um, thank you very much, Holly, for doing the interview this morning, and uh, we'll be in touch. All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And everybody, that was Miss Holly Tucker.